Welcome to a special Crossroads on TVI where we will explore the art of filmmaking and we have the perfect scenario to do this because I have with me today a group that is getting honored in China at the Shanghai International Film Festival. They have received the prestigious Golden Goblet nomination for their film A Gun and a Ring and they are here to tell us about their journey to this nomination and their movie. I wanted to introduce our first guest. Lenin M. Sivam was born in Jaffna, Sri Lanka and raised in Toronto, Canada. Besides spending time with his family, a sizable family actually, your wife and four children, and working as a software architect in Toronto, he's also a talented storyteller who writes, produces, and directs most of his movies. And he has a shelf of film awards already. His first short film, A Few Good People, won the Best Short Film of the Year Award from the Independent Art Film Society in 2006. He then went on to make a feature film called 1999, which won several awards, I'm sure it's familiar to our audience, including the top 10 Canadian films at the Vancouver Film Festival in 2009, the CBC Real Audience Choice Award in 2010, and a whole lot more that I don't want to take off the show, take up the show reeling off. But um, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's Thank exciting you. now that you're on to this, uh, this next venture. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for starters, tell us mm -hmm. about this film. What is it about? Oh, this, uh, this film is about uh, the, the Tamils here. It's, uh, it follows uh, six different, uh, you know, it's an, it's an urban drama. It mm -hmm. follows six different Tamil people here and uh, how they try to build a better life here while uh, they have passed still haunting them. So it's pretty much about, there are six stories and there's a gun and a ring that connects all these six uh, characters. So. And this is, that's such an interesting concept because mm -hmm. then you get to have all of these amazing characters. How, um, you know, what inspired the idea or the, or the stories that you portray in the movie? It all started um, right after I watched, you know, the Sri Lanka's Killing Field, uh, the documentary, Channel 4's documentary, and mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, sent me in a, you know, sort of very bad state, personally. It affected okay. me a lot. And, and you know, then, uh, yeah. several people in the community yeah. felt the same way, yeah. right? So, so I, I, I just realized that uh, the, the war itself uh, played a huge role in my life, like I'm 38, uh, it started right after I was born, and my, my even my name is a uh, result of all this ethnic conflict. Mm -hmm. So I thought, like, I'm in a position, I'm, I'm responsible to do something about it. So I started writing this uh, script, uh, how the war affects the people here. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just me, like, it affects everyone. You, uh, everyone here, like, every Tamil is affected by this, and, you know, so... I started writing it, and then uh, the first draft uh, came along, and I gave it to Sabason, my executive producer, and then he passed it on to um, Vishnu Murali, who's the uh, president of iCatch Multimedia, and then they said, uh, yeah, they are on board, because they all felt the same way. And then they said, uh, we should produce this, because uh, this is such a, such a great story, and we, we need to tell this story. So. Now, I, I'm trying to understand the idea of, and I know our viewers would want to, the idea. Mm. So does every, do you write a whole bunch of scripts and one jumps out at you? Or, you know, do you work on one and you polish that one and say, this is going to be it? Like, how does your writing process work in that way? Yeah, it, it, it varies. Like, with this one, it's, it's just like jumped at it and mm -hmm. jumped at me. But uh, before this, I was working on a script called God. That I've been working on that, like, last 10 years. Okay. So... And but that's this, not a main yeah, movie I yet. Did, yeah, okay. right after watching that uh, documentary, I'd say, I, when I started writing this, I just shelved that one. And then okay. just within five weeks, I got the first draft ready. So it's, it's, it varies to how much you are affected and how much deeply you are involved, right? So um, it isn't a matter of you don't write a script in sort of 
a little little bits sometimes it comes to you as a yeah yeah so so you gather the ideas and then you know when you put put them together you you write it within 5 weeks or 6 weeks that's how i work but uh, yeah. so um <clears throat> this this nomination that you've received <laughs> this mm. is amazing what did it feel like when you first heard that no it was it was really unbelievable uh, to, Shanghai is like upcoming festival. It's they are pretty much competing against all the major festival around the world, and they are already top ten. And um, having been nominated for this Golden Goblet, which is like they screen, they 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 selected out of over sixteen hundred films. It's it's sixteen hundred yeah. globally. Yeah, sixteen hundred globally, and it's huge. And even the judges, uh, like Tom Hooper, is the head, and and all the big shot around the world is there. So. It's like unbelievable. Still, I'm like uh, still <laughs> slowly digesting it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what actually happens when you when you when you go off to this festival? What is going to happen there? Tell us what your journey of the festival will be so, like. You know, so I, that we can I'm, live through I'm it. I'm as clueless as anyone else because I've never been there. But uh, I'm guessing that. Uh, so, oh, so the festival there they will screen about thousand to two thousand films, mm -hmm. but it's the biggest film market in Asia, just like Cannes. And uh, the focus will be in this 12 film. Like the festival happens 10 days every other every day. The almost a film will be focused. These 12 uh, films. of the 12 that have yeah. received the received the goblet nomination. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then they will screen these films to the judges, and then in the award ceremony they will have these awards announcing. Which there are eight categories we are nominated for, like uh, best picture, best uh, <coughs> screenplay. Best actor, best actress, uh, best composer, best. Uh, and you've received nominations for each of these. All twelve of them. Like okay. you get selected for Golden Goblet, okay. and then you are automatically selected for all eight awards. Okay. Like nominated for all eight awards. So there is a high chance, and <laughs> I'm I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> for you. But there's a high chance since you know there are all these different areas, right? Yeah, but uh, you know we we're, we're not hoping for anything. We just go in there and they're having fun, like. Uh, we're already there. It's 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 pretty. You know, it's a we are competing with like um, the like there are filmmakers who have made twenty films are uh, competing with them. Like we are the I'm I'm the second. Uh, my this is my second feature, but there is also uh, also first timer is also there. So the, this is very uh, different how how things work in China. Like they don't. Categorized like pros, uh, beginners, or anything like that. Everyone competes. Just goes in together. Yeah, yeah. Very fair competition. <laughs> so, I mean, your last feature was 1999, right? And and um, that was released to much acclaim. Mm -hmm. Did you did you feel uh, like a bit of pressure coming out with your next feature? Did you feel that expectations were really high from the community? Yeah, the, not uh, so much from the community, the, uh, the, because. Filmmaking takes a lot on you and a uh, lot on your family, a lot on your friends and all these volunteers that worked for me. Then they came and worked for me. They believed in me because of 1999. And uh, it was it a was lot of pressure for me. Like personally, like, if I don't get into any festival, then, you know, it's, it's hard to... It, it was like personally, I was I was kind of... You wanted to deliver yeah. for these people. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. how did 1999 prepare you? Like, what, what sort of extra skills or learnings did you gather from that experience that prepared you for this movie? In terms of uh, the craft itself, I learned a lot, right? You, you try and do it, experience it, so it's huge. But uh, what I would say, the real thing that uh, I learned out of 1999, is, it's, it's also very close to my heart, the story itself. It's about the gang violence here. And uh, there was a guy in Waterloo while I was attending. He was at the wrong coffee shop at the wrong time, and he was killed. And I couldn't take it. I was at the, at his funeral, and then I couldn't take it. Why are we running away from a war? And here we are just, you know, victimizing again. Here. And uh, I really wanted to find the reason. And then it, I went on a, you know, a journey to find out about these guys. And I realized that even the gang members themselves are victims. And it's all about the. Uh, part of adapting to a new land, like from a different culture and all that. So I really wanted to tell an honest story. And then that's what I did. And then it went all the way. And then I realized that, uh, you know, if you truly take up something 
from your heart and then if you if you try to be as honest as you know possible then i think it's there's always a chance people recognize that i think the, the authentic nature yeah, of it yeah i think if you are honest and then they all they foresee you know despite all the amateuristic in my film or anything like that and they go deeper i think the audience respond to that uh, you know the passion or the honesty and then it comes out mm-hmm. i think that's what happened with this film too because it's an honest uh, honest thing that just bothered my bothered me and then i thought it will bother the rest of the tamil so we made an honest film it's interesting because um I've noticed and I and I see a reflection of that just from watching the trailer mm-hmm. of a gun in a ring that you're very knowledgeable about mm-hmm. what uh, people within the community are going through and I felt that in 1999 that you reflected that on screen do you think that there are um certain types of movies that you're drawn to making do you is there you would say a category that you fall into No I you know I I set out to do like watching Hollywood films and you know like uh, typical you know thriller or mystery or anything like that but now uh, so, you know I don't know if it's a no fortunate or unfortunately I, I got into 1999 and all this uh, it's it's more deeper like you no know, you can't sacrifice a lot for these movies because at the end of the day you have something that that's worth you know it's a story that's worth telling mm-hmm. and uh, for those like it's just another typical uh, hollywood film right the here i feel like if i don't if i don't tell the 1999 story no one will mm-hmm. and the same thing with a gun and a ring so in that aspect i'm more and more leaning uh, towards these type of film that will matter to me and matter to people closer to me and then take our stories out there so do you um what do you think the reception has been so far what's the reception been like reception for this film for or? this film so far yeah oh, i mean people haven't? haven't seen it yet yeah. but there's excitement i oh, said yeah the, this nomination itself just uh, you know uh, the, the community itself is very proud of us and you know they are just encouraging us and it's it's it's, it's phenomenal and uh, you know uh, but uh, we haven't shown the film to many people yet so mm-hmm. so mm. when will that be available to people because i know when this airs mm. the number one call we're going to get is where can i see the movie so can you share some details yeah we are we are planning to release it in toronto in september but we still haven't uh, decided it uh, we have a uh, submission out to several festivals and then uh, we have to wait for the results and then once that comes back and then uh, and then we will but it looks like uh, around september that will release it but uh, unfortunately i can't tell us a uh, firm date now but it's potentially september this yeah, year for the viewing audience mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. um are there directors that uh, you consider role models be they hollywood bollywood any or even someone locally someone's films that you watch and and uh, you feel like you you would like to echo or you would love to be on a similar journey yeah the um, uh, I I love Quentin Tarantino. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of him. And also um I like Coen Brothers for the way they make the film. Mm. They give more uh, more importance to the characters, more importance to the story. And uh every every aspect of the film they they just make it just right. And I'm just too much I love them and uh, I uh, my only hope is to make film like that like one day i'll be able to make a film that so perfect in all the aspects so but I, i always wanted to be you know my own own way of telling stories your own stuff yeah, yeah. so that that own probably stuff. is my is my last question to you because mm-hmm. i'm curious about that i mean you have so many other things that you do you know you <clears throat> are obviously are you know you you have this career as a software architect your father you have other interests you're a writer as well so I'm, when did the idea of filmmaking that when did you realize that this is a serious thing this is not just a interest because you might have easily been a volunteer on someone else's project mm-hmm. right so when did you decide that this was a thing for you i always wanted to be part of films uh, okay. i love films uh, and uh, films are the only thing you know for a long time excited me excites me so it excited me and uh, uh, so when i when I, I I 
I tried the idea of, well, you know, I asked my mom, can I go to the film school? But it's a total no-no, you know, typical uh, <laughs> Tamil family. <laughs> yeah, Tamil family, that's, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I went to Waterloo <laughs> and uh, I graduated as I promised to my mom. She said, you graduate and you do whatever you want to do. And then I enrolled myself uh, in uh, rice and uh, film courses. And then I always wanted to do films. I, I don't know, it's not like... Uh, it's, I, I really can't pinpoint a day or time that, uh, you know, I always had an idea that I, I have to make films one day. And my father was, uh, father is a playwright, a director, an actor, and then he's always, you know, known as the act. I was always known as the actor's, actor's son. So, oh, so the genius so in that, yeah. It's just somehow indirectly, you know, gave me the some false confidence in me that, uh, yeah, I can do it because I'm son of this so-and-so, so maybe I can do it. So that sort of helped me too. But now, you know, that, that's a false confidence. Now I realize, like, it's, it's not easy, it's very tough, and there's a long way to go, but... Uh, what is tough about it, you think? The toughest part about filmmaking, the easiest part about filmmaking is the writing the story, because it only involves you. Okay. Everything else is tough, because it involves others, okay. other artists. So you have to, because I'm not a leader, so the, 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 I, wo I didn't know that I was a leader. And uh, you have to be a leader to be a filmmaker, because you have to inspire people to work on your idea day in and day out. And uh, f so far, they are volunteers. So, and then it's tough, like 16 hours every day we have to work. This movie we worked like uh, about 60 people worked every day for 16 hours. And you have to walk in there every day and you have to lead them and you have to pay attention to the little details. And you are responsible for everything. And that's the hardest part. Not, not like directing and uh, you know, training the actor and getting the delivery out, but there are so many things will happen, right? Everything, so everything that you thought like would go wrong will go wrong, and everything that you thought that wouldn't go wrong will also go wrong. So <laughs> it's, it's a high, it's very, very stressed and a very tough process. And then out of all this, you, you still have to maintain your creativity and then you know, deliver something good. But the, you know, it's, it's a great experience, and I'm, I'm very confident now, and, you know, and I, I see myself as a leader now, which thanks to, thanks to this, uh, you know, this passion, because I, I, would, I would never have realized that. Okay. Yeah, so what, so. What, what does the nomination mean to you? This is, this is very prestigious. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. this is one of the top ten festivals mm -hmm. um, globally. What does this nomination mean to you now? without even talking about what you may get at the end of the nomination? Yeah, it, it means a lot to me. Like personally, you know, the, my confidence, it's, it's higher. And uh, people, start, people will now, like, they wouldn't question my ability. And uh, so next time when I go, to, go and make, even if it doesn't get me anywhere, like uh, he, he, next time when I make a film, like people will take me seriously. Very it's seriously, easy to yeah. attract investment exactly. or, or, yeah. or, okay. Yes, exactly. Well, good so luck. Huge. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're really crossing mm. our fingers. When do you find out? When is the, uh, when is the festival happening again? I think the, the award ceremony on the 23rd, uh, I, we will find out. Right. But our film is premiering, world premiering on the 19th, June 19th. Good luck. Oh, and we'll, viewers you. will certainly, once we find out, we'll get out on social media so that I know that people will be keen to know how you do. Mm -hmm. Good luck, and I certainly wish you the best. Stay with us. Uh, we have a couple more people from this movie who are playing different roles, and we'll shed some light on, on that aspect of creativity. You're watching Crossroads on TVI with Manjula Savaraja. <laughs>
Welcome back to Crossroads on TVI with Manjula Salvaraja. We're talking about the art of filmmaking on set today. Let's meet our next guest. Pravin Mani is a world-renowned musician, singer, and composer with more than 15 Hollywood movies, Hollywood, sorry, Hollywood and Bollywood feature films to his credit. He has collaborated with the legendary A.R. Rahman on several projects, including the Oscar-winning film Slumdog Millionaire. Having worked with several Australian record companies, Virgin, EMI, Suburban, Voodoo Productions, and Sony Music, he now has a worldwide publishing contract with Warner Chapel, Australia. Originally from Chennai, India, Pravin has a music management, music business management degree from the Australian Institute of Music and a master's in music production from the Sydney School of Audio and it's a pleasure to have him in the studio with us. Hi Manjula, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. My pleasure to be here. So, you know, what drew you to this particular project? I mean, you have such a, a robust, a deep portfolio. Why was this exciting to you? Um, I was uh, always, uh, I had uh, always had a stint with a uh, bunch of uh, art uh, films, as I, I'd like to call it, which is... Uh, uh, I, I, I worked with a director called Jairaj uh, in India as well who made uh, kind of very realistic art films and I enjoyed working, uh, I enjoyed the pace of it, I enjoyed the realism of it and uh, I was always uh, drawn towards documentaries, uh, you know, drawn, I, I watch a lot of doc documentaries as well. So, um, you know, and being involved in the whole commercial game of Bollywood and Hollywood and and all that. I, I guess this was a kind of form of escapism. So when I met Lennon, he told me the script and, you know, the interwoven stories. And, you know, I was like, wow, OK, I want to do this. <laughs> OK, OK. So what is it, you know, is there a particular, um, you know, what do you use for inspiration from a story like that? I mean, you've got six, six different stories. Mm -hmm. um, what aspects do you pull in that help you compose the music? Um, Okay, initially, uh, well, we, I sat for a screening with the director. Uh, I would always like to take the director's point of view uh, because obviously uh, it's his story and uh, he had a way he wanted to narrate it and he had something in his uh, mind. So I would want, uh, I kind of firstly got his viewpoint on the whole thing so I could assimilate that into what I was doing. What I look for is uh, simple things. I, I look for characters uh, to get themed, uh, or I look at uh, situations which get themed. Uh, these are two primary things. So, like, say, assuming there are six stories, I look at six different uh, situations. Uh, there's the interconnecting links are also themed. So, essentially, what happens is we have uh, music which is scored to the mood of certain scenes, which are incidentals, as we call it, uh, which could just portray the mood of the scene. And then we have the stronger uh, beds which go with the character, which are flown through the entire movie. And, uh, and that is so almost like a, a, a particular piece of music for that character, is that what exactly. you mean? Exactly. It's, it's a particular piece of music or a particular style or it could be a particular instrument. Uh, but essentially what happens also is it, there's a recollection value when, you know, so assuming when he cuts from one story to the other, uh, even when he puts the title, if I start the score a few seconds earlier with, with the, a theme, people know, kind of, they anticipate what's coming, they kind of know. So we use this as an advantage. Sometimes we mislead people, uh, and I do have a tendency to do that. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of like to uh, take people away from the story and, you know, think something else is going to happen. Because with music, we tell our own stories, right? So we, we, can, we are capable of making anything into a satire if need be, or uh, treating a comedy thing as being something very serious if need be as well, right? So, um, so essentially what we do is we make sure that the mood of the film is totally reflected on the music. I mean, Amazing. that's the idea, you know, so that's... So when would, when would a director pull um, a, a composer such as yourself in? Is it early stages um, at script level? Uh, or, or is it when sort of the film is, all, the first sort of draft of the movie is in place? Well, it really varies. Um, 
with this particular project, uh, the composer had, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the director had uh, finished the film, he had uh, finished shooting the film, he, uh, it was on the edit table, and basically he had the first draft, the first cut, and uh, when I saw it. Um, but uh, there are instances where directors start by telling you the story, and sometimes they want to take some music with them to when they shoot even just so they kind of absorb the mood you know if, if it's something very thematic so they reflect to the music they yeah. reflect to the music it's like a music video for yeah. instance you know so they interpret it so th there's various ways and I, i've noticed different directors work in different ways and also i guess uh, the time factors and the convenience and the logical uh, logistics uh, you know matter a lot you know on availability and stuff like that so yeah yeah. So what kinds of what kind of music can we expect? I mean, what are the genres? Or what can we expect on this? Uh, well, okay. One with, with the music, what we did uh, was when I when I saw the film uh, and I discussed with Lennon, it it had a lot of it had a lot of realism. There were the, in the sense it was not one of those fast jump cut uh, films. Uh, it 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 had a pace which was very even through the whole film, you know, and through all the stories and and the build up of the pace was very gradual. So even with the music, uh, we didn't kind of go overboard. Uh, we made sure that uh, the dialogues uh, were cutting through and, uh, you know, the music was just playing as pr pretty much like a bed to the dialogues. And except where there were no dialogues and it was just the mood and it had to be kind of a little louder uh, or a little more pronounced. Um, other than that, it was it was fairly light. It was very we kept it as earthy as possible. Mm. There was to a lot go of, with the realistic. Yeah, sort of to go with the whole realistic it. thing. We had uh, a lot of acoustic instruments, guitars, uh, you know, a lot of stringed instruments, basically, which uh, I realized. Uh, I mean, you know, Lennon he loves guitars, so. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that's something we can expect for sure yeah, yeah. because it, it comes down like I said it comes there are certain directors who who want it completely scored and orchestrated you know so then we you know I mean ob obviously we we try to like I said earlier uh, we do take the director's perspective seriously you know it's not like hey you've done your thing now let's let me do whatever I want you, know? you don't so, create in a vacuum it sounds yeah like, exactly yeah. We, we work together and you know in the end we, everybody's happy that's you know now you've obviously seen the finished movie. Is there mm -hmm. something that stands out for you uh, in the movie? I love the pace of the film. Okay. You know, I mean, uh, coming again from this whole commercial uh, background, I mean, especially my last few stints uh, with, uh, you know, with, with Bollywood films, they're so paced and they're so commercial and, you know, they, they're so... There's a lot of predictability as well with, 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 with periodic songs coming in and, you know, and the situations and everything so defined. And the storyline sometimes. E yeah. Everything is so defined and, you know, it's so geared. It, it's, it's like going to a fast food joint. You know, you just know what you're going to get, right? Uh, this film, is, 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 it's like going to an exotic place and going to one of those, you know, going to middle of Africa and going to a food stall and trying out something and you know that you've never had you never had before and then That's a great analogy some yeah, experience you know so it, it's a totally different feel so coming to your question yes you know I, I feel the pace of the film was very real you know and I, I th that's what I think stands out I the 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 characters have done well uh, and the directors managed to weave the story interestingly there's the whole thing is uh, there is a positive message, which is what another thing I, which I liked a lot about the film. You know, it, it just uh, that it's, that came through. It's got uh, you know. It, it just you look at it and say never give up. Now you um, again, you've had this sort of you've worked in so many places. You've had a really diverse portfolio. What would you say um, is sort of the differences between sort of I know the industry here is just starting out, mm -hmm. but uh, especially the the you know South Asians making films in, in Canada. What would you say are some of the big differences that you see between the industry here and in all these other places you've been at Australia um, and India? Like, are there are there things that stand out for you? Well, there are 
Uh, I do watch a lot of foreign language films. Um, um, so I, 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 I watched my share of Korean and you know Iranian films and uh, you know Indian films. Uh, what what I felt is a cultural story is always interesting because it tells it. There's always more to the film. It's 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 like when you watch the film, you're also learning their culture. You know, like when I watch an Ira Iranian film uh, like Children of Heaven, and you know, you you just sit there and go, wow. You know, you look at their streets, you look at the way they live, you you know, and you know that's portrayed as r real. You know, so. Uh, now that that aspect is there, I'm again talking purely in terms terms of non-commercial because when you say when you talk about commercial films, everybody's going the Hollywood way, mm. right? I'm 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 talking Hollywood blockbusters. Mm -hmm. Now whether you look at an, a a Bollywood film, it's still going to have the same kind of action sequences. They use the same technology, uh, you know, for fast fast-paced films and the chases and the you know the love the way that the excitement melts and the yeah. dance and whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I would pretty much look at, you know, so whether, you, whether it's a Chinese film or an Australian film or uh, a Canadian film, once it's made as a total commercial film, it's pretty much, except for the accent, the tech, you know, it's the same. <laughs> it's the, 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 culturally, there's nothing different. You know, they, they show an ATM, they show a gun, they show, you know. With certain films where it depicts realism, it's, it's so different because... Like even this film, even though it's in Canada, it's about uh, you know a group of people who've uh, been moved to Canada, you know, uh, or been displaced to Canada, and showing how it affects them in different ways, and you know whether it's positive or negative, or, and how they look at it. There's a enormous sense of realism, and you know, and uh, so it's almost like a richer and uncommon story because yeah. it isn't that boy meets girl or no. you know boy fights criminals and wins or whatever the case is yeah no actually... it's it's a very it's a very intense film actually and i think with any art film it's 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 like art it's how you interpret it you know you can it's how much you understand it and how deep you go into it it's like music you know people understand it at superficial levels and they like it on it you know and there are people who understand it very at deeper levels and who like it for different reasons, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or, or not like it, whatever. Um, the, I think with this film, it's the same thing. It, it's, it's like when I saw it, I saw it in my perspective, it's a deep film. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I could see well what Lenin was trying to say, you know. And I'm, I'm hoping that the people see it the way I saw it. Amazing. Well, we'll know soon enough. Yeah. Right? It's September. So. We're very, thank you so much for joining us. It's pleasure, been Manjula. such a, a philosophical gentleman, definitely. And it's been such a pleasure talking. And Likewise. we cannot wait to see this movie. And I think our viewers are going to feel the same way. We'll take a break now. You're watching Crossroads on TVI with Manjula Savaraja. Welcome back to Crossroads on TVI. We today are talking about the art of filmmaking and we're lucky to have a team from an exciting movie that's coming out and we're going to meet our next guest. John Barry, as his colleagues describe him, is passion personified, playing the role of John Proctor in Arthur Miller's well-known piece, The Crucible, ignited a desire in him to pursue a career in acting and he's doing well so far. He's attended Ryerson Theater School for two years and then diversified into songwriting and singing. Over the years, he's depicted a variety of characters in major productions. In A Gun and a Ring, the film we've been talking about throughout the show, John plays a dedicated detective who senses doom but ignores it with disdain only to learn the bitter truth at the end. And he is here with us in the studio. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Pangela. So, you know, I'm curious to, uh, to know what drew you to this particular character? Uh, what, what drew me to this character? Um, 
Well, I, I guess it kind of fell in place in a sense. Um, I, I had responded to an ad that I'd found on on Craigslist, mm-hmm. and uh, and I went for this audition. I, I knew very little about the film, okay. and uh, and, then and that I, wasn't revealed in the ad either. I'm guessing. No, right? no. Yeah. All, all it said in the ad was uh, we need a detective. Or, or an actor who's willing to play a detective, okay. and that's that's really all I knew about it. So uh, the the learning process began really when I went for the audition, and and I met the team when I went to the audition. And when I was waiting, I could overhear people talking about Lennon, and I could overhear them talking about 1999. And so at that point, I realized like this is something special. This is. Um, this this is something I would really like to be a part of, mm-hmm. and uh, went in for the audition. I met Lennon. Uh, he's very personable, very easygoing, warm person, and um, it just kind of it 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 felt right, really. And uh, got the call a couple weeks later. That what did it, that feel like getting that call to say hey? Well, that was. Uh, <laughs> That was unreal because at the time uh, I was working in a gym as a personal trainer and I, uh, I found, uh, I, I checked my email early in the morning on a Monday morning, uh, first thing, and I got this email. It was actually an email that, that confirmed that, uh, that I got the role and it was surreal because after, after the audition, I, was, I went home and I was like, who's this Lennon Sivan guy? I gotta find out. <laughs> so I, I Googled him and I found out all about uh, like uh, 1999 and I watched 1999, it was on YouTube. And uh, I watched some of his interviews and I thought, this is, this is something special. I could tell that he's serious about uh, the art of filmmaking and it's mm-hmm. not so, it wasn't something uh, superficial, uh, that there was a real sort of passion and heart that went into it. And, and to be part of that is, uh, is a great, great privilege. So, so tell us about this role, um, the, the role that you play, the character that you play. Uh, I play the role of John, uh, Detective John. Um, and um, basically, uh, John is a, uh, a, very, a very passionate detective, mm-hmm. uh, makes his decisions based on uh, his instinct mm-hmm. and uh, in his heart. So uh, that's something I could relate to. Um, I felt like the whole, this whole process, this of, of me going for this uh, audition and, and and getting this role, there was there was an instinctive feeling that I had while doing it, which, which was pretty strong. That that uh, that was telling me that that, that this was. This was right. This was a, a good. You thing felt like this was of. the role for you. Yeah, yeah, oh, and it, it, yeah. So it, I I don't always experience that in life, but this I could just sense somehow that it was uh, it was important, even in just going for the audition, I, not knowing anything about it. Mm-hmm. I just I had this sense like you know go for this and, and now really the, pursue it. the interesting thing about the script is that i mean he's told us a little bit about the story and it incorporates it, you know the stories of these six different people and they have um, experiences that are common to the tamil canadian community mm-hmm. so that meant that you almost had to learn a bit more than you how was what was that like like how did you prepare yourself with regards to learning about the community and the history and all of that that's a good question. Um, I grew up in Scarborough, so I, I have a lot of friends who are uh, Tamil background. Mm-hmm. So, and I went to high school at a, at a high school in Scarborough that was uh, probably twenty or thirty percent. Um, I think it was about twenty percent uh, Tamil in, wow. in origin. So I okay. had a lot of friends from from there, and so I had heard stories about um, not their experience directly from, from back home, but mm-hmm. you know things that their parents had gone through in the Civil War back home. And, and so I, I'd, I'd had that experience, uh, but then I also, you know, I did some, uh, some research on, on the internet. To, though my character didn't really have any direct contact with any of the, the Tamil characters, other than really the, the little girl, Minu, which is, doesn't even happen verbally. 
uh, I knew that that was going to be important. Just working on a set with people who are of that background. Just to have that context, exactly. right? Yeah. Now, the interesting thing, too, is that you have formal training in this area. How, yeah. I mean, if you met someone young that's watching this interview and thinks that this is a path, your, the path that you've taken is one they wish to pursue, and what is some advice that you would give to them? That, that's a tough one because uh, I feel like I feel like I'm still finding my way, and, I, and I'm still uh, finding my feet. Um, that said, you're in a feature it, film. Yeah, it, which is which is it. It's been very surreal for me to, to try to to sort of get used to this whole idea. Yeah. Um, but um, if I could pass on anything, it would be to to really listen to your own uh, instinct. And, and, and if you and if you don't have a strong sense of that, to find a way to be to come in contact with with your own sort of intuitive sense of of uh, what's right or wrong, especially if you're playing a role. And, and you know you always have a director telling you how they would like it to to, to come out. But I think you really need an in, uh, a connection to it yourself, mm -hmm. and that involves really being connected uh, to the deeper parts of of yourself. And, um, and for me, things like meditation and, and finding time to be alone in nature, I mean, that, that's, that really feeds me uh, the energy and, and it grounds me uh, for, for preparing for any kind of creative endeavor. And it gives me the inspiration. So, I mean, I know that works for me. Uh, so I think I would say find what works for you on an intuitive level. And uh, and you're gonna have to compromise a bit, but don't waver on that if if it doesn't feel right. You know, stick with what really stick feels with what right. you think is right. Now, do you yeah. think that the formal learning makes a difference? I think it does because it, it arms you with the tools necessary to sort of strip away uh, your own ego and your own things that you do that get in the way of playing a role. Uh, with authenticity and being true to the story because in the end that's really what you're doing is you're serving a story you're serving something that's that's greater than you as an individual as an ego you're, you have to put that aside and and let the lines flow through you and let the story flow through you and really be present mm -hmm. so uh, formal training does really help you um, it does really help if you find the formal training that that's suited to to who you are um, then, uh, then it can be really helpful with arming you with the tools. How does stage acting prepare you for this? Do you think it does? For, for film acting? Yeah. Uh, well, acting, when it boils down to it, is, uh, I mean, my own personal experience of it is, is about being uh, present and, uh, and trying to be relaxed and, uh, and then letting the story flow through you. So in that way, they're, they're very similar. And what you can learn from theater acting, you can you can transfer that into to film acting, at that very basic level. Mm -hmm. um, but there's there's a difference too, in the way that uh, film acting can be very subtle and it can be very uh, um, sort of closed in. So little little movements that you make can can there can be a lot of meaning behind that. Whereas with theater, it's very grand, it's very yes. energetic. There's a stage presence. Exactly. And, a, yes, and yeah. your audience really feeds into that. It's almost like a religious ex experience. You're having this Well, you sort have them of, right in front as opposed to in a yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. And you're connecting. You know, they, they influence your performance, whether you want to believe it or not, you know, mm. so. So, you know, as a, as a final question, I'd be curious. <clears throat> I mean, I know that the team had sort of 16-hour days, as I've now learned, uh, making this movie. Um, and it doesn't have to be an actual scene in the movie, but I'm, I'm curious while you were going through the experience of making the movie, if there's something that stood out for you as, you know, something memorable that, yes. that you think, gosh, that, that was a phenomenal moment and I'll take it with me yeah. to whatever I'll, I'll go on to. It would have to be, I, if I, I couldn't really put it into one moment. It, had, it sort of happened over the course of the day. We were filming a pivotal scene in the film and it was at a park where I, and I, I'd work, I was working actually at the time very close by and I would take my lunch to this park as, and it was sort of my place of solitude. And as I mentioned before about you know, finding that place of connection in, in like places in nature, uh, well, I go to this park 
at, when I was at work to t kind of have my downtime and have my lunch there. And, and it's this beautiful place on the Scarborough Bluffs. And so we ended up filming the most pivotal scene for my character at this same park where I would go and have my lunch. And so for me, the whole time I was there, I was thinking, oh, this is unbelievable. This like, was meant to happen. Like it felt like that. Yeah, it really felt like that. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, we wish you guys the best of luck with the Golden Goblet nomination. Very, you know, definitely want to extend the team is very proud of you guys and hope something good comes out of that. Thanks. And I think the movie's coming out in September, so we'll hear more from you. Thank in the you. next couple of months. Thank you, Angela. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you very much. And we are going to leave you with the trailer of the movie um, that we've been talking about, A Gun and a Ring. You've been watching Crossroads on TVI with Manjula Salvaraja. What are you doing? detective. <laughs> And arrogantly, I followed my heart. And you can't be able to get the car. And you can't be able to get the car. That was a good meal. You can't be able to get the car. You can't be able to get the ओडिटान <laughs> Yeah.